Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. Patrick here moving on to the next example. So we got to find the equation of a tangent line on this function f of x equals x minus 1 over x plus 1. That is perpendicular to this line 4x plus 2y minus 3 equals 0. This is a multiple choice question. So notice we got these different possibilities. We got four lines or none of the above. Now, to start this question off, I'm actually going to show you a quick visual of what's going on. So I'll draw a quick graph of f of x. Now, you don't necessarily have to draw a graph to solve this question, but this is not too bad of a function to work with. So I'm going to draw it out quickly. So if you remember from advanced functions, this is a linear over a linear function. So the horizontal asymptote is 1 over 1, which would be over here. And then we have a vertical asymptote at negative 1 which would be there, and then a y-intercept of negative 1 over positive 1, which would be here, which would just be negative 1, and then an x-intercept at an x-value 1, the x-value that makes the numerator 0. So that's here. So this function basically looks like this. Right? And so what we have to find is the equation of a tangent line, some kind of tangent on this function, let's say like over here, where this tangent is going to be perpendicular to this line here, 4x plus 2y minus 3. And so what we can do, we can figure out first what's the slope of the tangent going to be. And if it's going to be perpendicular to this line, then we can get the slope of this line, and then we could get, just get the negative reciprocal. That's going to be a perpendicular line. So if I take this line 4x plus 2y minus 3 equals 0, let's put it into y equals mx plus b form. So I'm going to bring the 4x over, the negative 3 over. So I'll have 2y equals negative 4x plus 3. Divide everything by 2, and I would end up with that. And so the slope of this line is negative 2. And so this tangent here has to be perpendicular to this slope. So notice that this slope is negative 2 over 1. So a perpendicular line is going to have a slope of positive 1 over 2. Right? So we basically have to find now a tangent that has a slope of 1 over 2 on this function. So this tangent line has to have a slope of 1 over 2. And so what we can do, first we've got to find out, so we know the tangent has to have a slope of 1 over 2. The problem is, is that we got to find out where that's going to happen on this function. We need the actual location of where that tangent slope is going to be 1 over 2. And the way we can do that, the way we could figure out the location, is we can actually figure out what's the derivative of this function. And then we could take the derivative and set it to 1 over 2, and then solve for x. That's going to give us the value of x of where the tangent line is going to have a slope of 1 over 2. So to take the derivative of this, I could use the quotient rule. So I'll take the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over uh, the bottom squared, x plus 1 squared, like that. And so if you simplify this, you'll have uh, over here x plus 1, right? 1 times x plus 1 is just x plus 1, minus this 1 can go away, and you would distribute that negative 1 into the bracket, so it would be negative x plus 1. So notice the x's will cancel, and you'll have 1 plus 1, which would give you 2. Right? So the derivative of this function is 2 over x plus 1 squared. Right? That's the simplified derivative. And so what we want to do now is what does the derivative give us? The derivative gives us the slope of a tangent of this function at any x value. But we already know what the slope of the tangent is. It's 1 over 2. So we just got to set that derivative equal to 1 over 2 and solve for that x value. And the way you could do that, you could cross multiply here. So you'd have x plus 1 squared equals 4, like that. 
And then from here, what you could do is you could square root both sides to get rid of this exponent too. But notice that when you square root four, there's two cases for that. That could be plus or minus two. And so what we got to do is work with both of these cases. So x plus one can either be negative two or x plus one can be positive two. And then when we solve for x for both of these, we'll get negative three. And over here, we'll get one. And so notice that there's actually two x values on this function here where the slope of the tangent is going to be 1 over 2. And it actually makes sense on the graph. I'll show you at the end how it makes sense. But for now, just realize that there's two locations, two x values on this function where the slope is 1 over 2. And so what we got to do now what are we finding? We're finding the equation of a tangent line. So we need the slope and then we need the full coordinate as well. So notice we only have the x values of these two coordinates. So we got to find the corresponding y values. The way you could do that is plug in those x values into the original function. So negative 3 minus 1 is going to be negative 4. And then negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. And so this would be positive 2. So one of the coordinates, let me write it here, is negative 3 and 2. Then the other coordinate, you plug in 1 uh, in this function. You get 1 minus 1, which is 0, and then 1 plus 1, which is 2. 0 over 2 is just 0. And so the other coordinate is 1 and 0. The slope of the tangent is 1 over 2 at this function's x-intercept, which is at 1 and 0, and we showed that with the graph before as well. So these are the two points where the tangent slope is going to be 1 over 2. And so now what we got to do is we got to find out the equation, or the equations, of the two tangent lines. Because even though they both have the same slope, they're probably going to have a different b value. They're going through different points. So let's start off with negative 3 and 2. So we would have what? y equals 1 over 2x plus b. Got to solve for this b value. So we'd plug in negative or uh, 2, sorry, for y. And then negative 3 for x. So we'd have negative 3 over 2 plus b. Bring this over. So we'd have 2 plus 3 over 2 equals b. And so this would end up being 7 over 2. And so the equation is y equals 1 half x plus 7 over 2. That's the equation of one of the tangents. Okay, And then the other equation at this point, 1 and 0, y equals 1 over 2x plus b. Plug in 0 for y. Uh, yeah, x is going to be 1. So b is negative 1 over 2. Right, so the other equation, this is going to be minus 1 over 2. All right, so those are the two equations of the tangents. But notice that these values here are in standard form, while this is in y equals mx plus b form. So what we actually have to do is convert these to standard form. And also notice that these choices only potentially give us one of these tangent lines, right? Because it says the equation of a tangent line. Even though there's two, the possibilities are only giving us one. So we got to figure out when we convert these two lines to standard form, are any of these lines going to be one of these choices? And if it's not, then it's going to be none above. So to convert it to standard form, we've got to get rid of the denominator. So we can actually multiply here everything by 2, right? the lowest common denominator. So we'd have 2y equals x plus 7. And to put it in this kind of format, bring the x over, so we'd have negative x plus 2y is equal to 7. And actually notice that it's this value here. So that's actually the answer. But let's convert this one as well. So if I multiply this by 2, this by 2, this by 2, so we'd have 2y equals x minus 1, bring the x over, and we end up getting that right there. All right, so notice that this possibility 
is none of these over here. And so the answer to this question actually is B, right? So that's the equation of the tangent line on this function that's perpendicular to this line, right? And the fact that we got two tangents actually makes sense graphically. Let me show you how it looks. So if we redraw that function, y equals one, uh, negative one, then we have negative one and then positive one. So it looks like this. It's a little zoomed in. It's all good though. One and zero here. There's the tangent and then negative three and two that's so this is at negative one. So negative three is going to be like over here. So let's say that the point is right there. So that's going to be the other tangent. Notice that both of these tangents are parallel. They both have the slope one over two, but nevertheless, it is two separate tangents, but only one of them was one of the multiple choice answers.